We have to teach our children black history. Tell them about our black heroes, our black culture, so they don't face the white man believing they are inferior. Denzel, for me, represents our black manhood. It seems that Spike Lee couldn't keep quiet about some juicy gossip surrounding the legendary Denzel Washington. Rumor has it that Denzel might have blown the lid off Hollywood's supposed sinister agenda. Yes, you heard that right. The man who's been a Hollywood staple for decades is now in the center of a scandalous storm. According to the grapevine, Spike Lee didn't hold back when discussing this explosive revelation. It appears that Lee, never one to shy away from controversy, had quite a bit to say about Denzel's bold move. He hinted at the potential consequences one might face when shining a light on Tinseltown's dark underbelly. Hollywood, with all its glitz and glamour, apparently has some skeletons in its closet. So, what exactly did Spike spill about Denzel's shocking claims? In Malcolm X, that's never been done before. I may be biased, <laughs> but I'm from Brooklyn, so what? During the 2019 American Film Institute Awards, Spike Lee delivered a heartfelt tribute to Denzel Washington that not only celebrated the actor's incredible talent, but also gave him a pat on the back for shedding light on the complexities of race and representation in Hollywood. Lee's speech was a powerful testament to Washington's role in breaking down barriers and challenging racial stereotypes. In his speech, Lee began by stating, Denzel, for me, represents our black manhood. This opening line immediately sets the tone for the tribute emphasizing the significance of Denzel Washington as a symbol of black masculinity in an industry historically plagued by racial biases and stereotypes. Lee went on to highlight one of Washington's most iconic performances, his portrayal of Malcolm X in the eponymous film. He said, when I saw what you did in Malcolm X, that's never been done before. By acknowledging the groundbreaking nature of Washington's performance as Malcolm X, Lee underscored how Denzel had shattered the limitations imposed on black actors in Hollywood. Lee's personal connection to Washington, both being from Brooklyn, added a layer of authenticity to his tribute. He boldly asserted, I may be biased, but I'm from Brooklyn, so what? This statement not only expressed his genuine admiration, but also hinted at the significance of their shared cultural background in shaping their careers and perspectives. Lee then delved into the dedication and hard work that Denzel Washington invested in his roles, particularly his portrayal of Malcolm X. He emphasized, that is the greatest performance ever on celluloid, highlighting the magnitude of Washington's achievement. Lee emphasized that Washington's commitment to his craft was instrumental in channeling the spirit of Malcolm X into his portrayal. By doing so, he touched upon the idea that authenticity and depth in performances could only be achieved through hard work and dedication, a counterpoint to the superficial and stereotype-ridden portrayals often demanded of black actors in Hollywood. In connecting Denzel Washington's excellence to the broader context of racism in Hollywood, Spike Lee implicitly called out the industry's historical tendency to limit the roles and opportunities available to black actors. Denzel Washington's success was a testament to his ability to transform transcend these limitations, but it also highlighted the systemic barriers that black actors have had to overcome. For context, Denzel has been outspoken about how Hollywood, the media, and the entertainment industry perpetually sent the message that black actors in movies focusing on black communities and stories didn't sell overseas. With his trademark wisdom and unwavering determination, Washington reflected on the shifting excuses and biases within the industry, shedding light on the challenges he had faced and conquered. At the heart of the conversation, was the deeply ingrained belief that black actors and black-centric films struggled to find success in the U.S. and overseas. You hear often that black actors, black movies don't play well overseas. Is that the truth or... is that an excuse? Denzel Washington succinctly captured this sentiment, stating... Because they used to say it didn't sell over here. Hmm. Then it does. Then they said it doesn't sell in, in, in the South. And it does. Washington's remarks highlighted the inconsistency in Hollywood's narrative, suggesting that these were not objective truths, but rather excuses to perpetuate systemic biases. One of the most powerful moments in the interview came when Washington shared his approach to these industry stereotypes. I just kept pushing. He saw these challenges as opportunities to prove Hollywood wrong, exemplifying his resilience and determination. 
Denzel Washington had indeed become one of Hollywood's most bankable stars, consistently delivering critically acclaimed performances and defying the narrative that suggested black actors couldn't succeed on a global scale. As the conversation delved into the Oscars and the ongoing debate about diversity and inclusion in the industry, Washington offered a unique perspective. He stated, I've been the guy at the Oscars without my name being called. I've been the guy at the Oscars when my name is called. I've been the guy at the Oscars when everybody thought they were going to call my name and they didn't. His personal experiences highlighted the unpredictability and challenges faced by black actors in the Oscars race. When asked about the fairness of the Oscars, Washington's response was succinct, I didn't have to think about it, I lived it. He acknowledged the disparities but refused to let them define his career or his outlook. Denzel Washington's resilience and commitment to his craft served as a testament to his unwavering dedication to excellence. In the face of adversity, Washington delivered a powerful message. If you're looking for an excuse, you'll find one in race. You can find it wherever you like. He encouraged aspiring actors and filmmakers not to be deterred by obstacles, including racial bias. His message was clear, perseverance and determination were the keys to success. Denzel Washington's journey from humble beginnings to Hollywood stardom exemplified this ethos. As the interview neared its end, Washington hinted at a potential return to directing. Still, he also underscored the practicality of acting in Hollywood, saying, acting paid the bills. His words served as a reminder that the entertainment industry could be challenging, and success often required multifaceted talents. Denzel Washington's willingness to adapt and evolve in a constantly changing industry set an example for all those who aspired to make their mark. Denzel Washington's interview was a powerful reminder that Hollywood, the media, and the entertainment industry had long perpetuated the belief that black actors and films with black stories could not succeed globally. In any case, Spike Lee's enduring career in addressing racial issues is nothing short of remarkable. Throughout his entire trajectory, he has consistently employed his platform to illuminate the intricate and unjust challenges faced by black Americans. One prescient issue he identified was Hollywood's tendency to cast black actors and coerce them into cross-dressing roles, a concern also voiced by Dave Chappelle. When I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress, at some point in their career, I'd be connecting them down like, wow, all these brothers gotta wear a dress. In the realm of Hollywood, numerous black male comedians have embraced roles that require them to don feminine attire in television and film productions. Key hominem. <laughs> this, of course, translates from the Latin to who demand. <laughs> These characters, including iconic ones such as Shanine Jenkins from the show Martin and Medea, have brought immense joy to countless fans. Nevertheless, it's essential to acknowledge that these portrayals have sparked criticism, with arguments that they undermine black masculinity. One significant moment in the ongoing dialogue about this issue occurred during a highly anticipated interview between Dave Chappelle and Oprah Winfrey. Chappelle, renowned for his audacious and thought-provoking comedy, shared his rationale for turning down a multi-million dollar opportunity. He recounted an incident from the production of the film Blue Streak, in which he co-starred alongside Martin Lawrence. During the film's production, various individuals, including the writers and producers, strongly urged Chappelle to wear a dress in a particular scene. Despite persistent pressure and the assertion that all the greats did it at some point in their careers, Chappelle remained unwavering in his refusal to don the dress. This experience left Chappelle, a comedian known for his fascination with conspiracy theories, with the impression that there might be an agenda to encourage prominent African-American actors in Hollywood to cross-dress. He questioned why this theme seemed to recur, asking, all the comics that I've seen, you know, strong brothers, why they be putting us in these dresses? It's vital to recognize that Chappelle's perspective represents his personal stance and should be respected as such. However, it is worth noting that other actors and comedians have chosen to approach these roles differently. For instance, Eddie Murphy, a celebrated actor and comedian, has portrayed female characters in films such as The Nutty Professor and its sequel, Nutty Professor Sassint, The Clumps, as well as Norbit. In The Nutty Professor, Murphy embraced multiple roles, including Mama Clump and Grandma Ida Mae Jensen, garnering both critical acclaim and commercial success. The film's popularity led to a sequel which also performed impressively at the box office. Similarly, in Norbit, Murphy portrayed the character Rasputia, often seen in flamboyant dresses and skimpy clothing. Despite receiving mixed reviews from critics, the film resonated with audiences and achieved significant box office success. The Waynes Brothers 
including Sean and Marlon, collaborated with their brother Keenan Ivory Waynes on the 2004 film White Chicks. In this comedy, the brothers played undercover cops who cross-dressed and used whiteface to pose as white women. The film, with a $37 million budget, surpassed expectations and earned over $113 million at the box office. Although there have been talks of a sequel, no official confirmation has been made. Furthermore, comedian Martin Lawrence, renowned for his iconic role as Shanene Jenkins on the classic 1990s television show Martin, revisited cross-dressing in the 2000 film Big Mama's House. This film resonated with fans, grossing over $174 million worldwide and spawning two sequels. Several other prominent actors, including Chris Tucker, Wesley Snipes, Tracy Morgan, and Ving Rhames, have also taken on successful roles that involve cross-dressing. Tyler Perry, in particular, has gained fame for his portrayal of the Medea character in stage plays and subsequent films. While Perry has garnered a devoted following, he has also faced criticism, notably from Spike Lee. Despite the controversy surrounding such portrayals, Tyler Perry has consistently defended his choices, emphasizing his agency in building a successful successful franchise. During a conversation with rapper T.I. on his Expeditiously podcast, Perry addressed Dave Chappelle's comments about African-American comedians cross-dressing in films. He underscored that he made the decision to create and portray the Medea character and that no one forced him to wear a dress. While individuals like Perry may have concerns about their public image, Spike Lee has never shied away from addressing challenging issues through his work. In films such as Do the Right Thing and Malcolm X, Lee delves deep into the racial tensions and social inequalities that have plagued American society. Through his storytelling, he compels viewers to confront uncomfortable truths, even when those truths are too unsettling for Hollywood to embrace fully. Lee's films frequently feature black protagonists, allowing them to explore their experiences in a predominantly white society. He doesn't merely tell stories about black people. He grants them a voice and agency within their narratives. What distinguishes Lee is his belief that black filmmakers should focus on penetrating the industry and establishing a solid track record of productivity rather than advocating for a separate and independent black production, distribution, and exhibition system. In essence, he values inclusion and integration over isolation. To put his beliefs into action, Spike Lee established his production company, 40 Acres and a Mule, which has been responsible for producing numerous feature-length films. Remarkably, Lee has undertaken various roles in these films, serving as a writer, director, and producer. Samuel, one remarkable aspect of Spike Lee's vision is his unwavering commitment to nurturing the future of black filmmaking. He has actively mentored the next generation of talent, irrespective of their racial backgrounds. Filmmakers such as Rusty Cundiaf, Darnell Martin, and Cassie Lemons have benefited from Lee's guidance. Moreover, his films and productions have provided opportunities for many actors, including Holly Berry, Giancarlo Esposito, Bill Nunn, and Danny Aiello, who received their initial breakthroughs in his projects. Despite his evolution as a filmmaker spanning more than three decades, Spike Lee continues to approach his work with youthful curiosity and fearlessness. He is unafraid to ask uncomfortable questions and address challenging topics through his storytelling. Lee has earned a reputation as Hollywood's conscience, with his films chronicling the lives of black individuals and challenging societal assumptions about race, class, and gender. In interviews and speeches, he has been a vocal advocate against social injustice, police brutality, and the entertainment industry's issues with representation. In recognition of his exceptional contribution, to film and television culture, Spike Lee was recently honored with the BFI Fellowship, the highest accolade presented by the British Film Institute. Past recipients of this prestigious award include luminaries such as Orson Welles, Laurence Olivier, Elizabeth Taylor, and Steve McQueen. However, Lee is quick to share credit with the numerous individuals who have supported him throughout his journey, from family and teachers to industry colleagues and his wife, Tanya. Spike Lee's journey commenced in Atlanta, Georgia, where he was born Shelton Jackson Lee, but was raised in what he affectionately refers to as the Republic of Brooklyn. His mother specialized in arts and black literature, working as an educator, while his father pursued a career as a jazz musician. Lee's educational path included Morehouse College, a historically black institution in Atlanta, notable for its alumni such as Martin Luther King Jr. and Samuel L. Jackson. Later, he attended New York University Graduate Film School, a pivotal institution 
institution that shaped his filmmaking perspective. During his early days at NYU, Spike Lee's outspoken nature became evident when he challenged his class's screening of The Birth of a Nation, a 1915 epic by D.W. Griffith, notorious for glorifying the Ku Klux Klan. Lee took issue with the fact that they were taught about the film's technical innovations without acknowledging its role as a recruiting tool for the Klan. In response, he created a student film titled The Answer, in which a young black director hired to remake The Birth of a Nation faces studio interference. When the director withdraws from the project, he becomes the target of Klan members who place a burning cross outside his home. This student film, however, proved divisive, with some NYU faculty members finding it so offensive that they recommended unsuccessfully that Lee not continue his final two years at the institution. This early incident foreshadowed the complex relationship between Spike Lee and the film industry, marked by both accolades and criticism. Throughout his career, Lee has earned prestigious awards such as an Oscar, two Emmys, and a BAFTA, but he has also faced significant backlash. Notably, when Do the Right Thing was released, some prominent film critics wrongly predicted that the film would incite African Americans to riot across the country. This baseless claim reflected a deeply racist perspective on a film that courageously explored the legacy of racism in the United States. Additionally, Spike Lee has consistently been at odds with the Academy Awards. In 1990, Driving Miss Daisy, a feel-good race relations film, won the Best Picture category over Do the Right Thing, which wasn't even nominated in that category. This omission sparked controversy. Decades later, in 2019, Black Klansman lost the Best Picture Oscar to Green Book, leading to a visible display of Lee's disappointment. Despite these challenges, Black Klansman did win an Oscar for Best Adapted Screenplay, showcasing Lee's resilience and commitment to addressing pressing social issues through his work. In any case, Spike Lee and Denzel Washington are not the only actors speaking up against the alleged racism taking place in Tinseltown. As time goes on, more and more actors are speaking up on this issue. In fact, in a not-so-surprising turn of events last year, acclaimed actor Terrence Howard announced his departure from Hollywood. The star, best known for his roles in films like Hustle and Amp Flow, and his captivating portrayal of Lucius Lyon on the hit TV series Empire, made the decision to step away from the glitz and glamour of Tinseltown. However, his exit was shrouded in controversy, as he spoke out about the challenges he faced as a black man in the industry. During a candid interview at the time, Terrence Howard revealed his frustrations with the roles assigned to black men in Hollywood. He expressed his desire to see a change in the narrative, saying, I would like to know the ability of men to be men and people to be people. The man has been demonized. It appeared that Howard believed Hollywood was pushing an agenda to emasculate black men and restrict the range of roles they could portray on screen. One of the most significant issues Terrence Howard highlighted was the pressure he faced to take on roles that, in his view, perpetuated stereotypes or challenged his masculinity. He claimed that he was falsely accused of being difficult to work with simply because he refused to accept certain roles that he felt did a disservice to the image of black men in society. Meanwhile, fans have commented on this issue, with one particular fan saying, It's true, Hollywood is twisted, good on anyone who stands on their principles, never saw Denzel in a dress. I applaud him in his decision to walk, and anyone else. I predict that many are fed up, and there will be independent production companies that will put out content that aligns with what the people really want to watch. In any case, Spike Lee's comments on Hollywood's secret agenda and the alleged racism that takes place are just the tip of the iceberg. It seems that there is a lot more happening behind the scenes in Tinseltown. Anyway, that's it for this video folks. Bye.